the Damage Trap, aka the Spike Trap. It's been in Fortnite since nearly the very beginning. It went through some wild changes several seasons ago, but hasn't been touched significantly since. Recently, Ninja went on a short tirade on his stream and called for the trap to be nerfed. Here, take a look. GG's. Was it worth it? WAS IT WORTH IT?! You probably thought it was worth it. Now, can we just get traps nerfed again? I'd like to be the first person to publicly rage right now on their stream. Can we can we nerf traps? 150 is way, way too much damage. 125 solid, even 100. Lit, bro. How many times when you are trapped in a box, is it the one trap that kills you? No, there's like 80% of the time that they have like eight traps around. Like you're dead, dude. You're gonna die, you're gonna die. 150 is way too much. Please. That trap damage has been way too high for way too long. So as you saw, Ninja, one of the more experienced and influential Fortnite players, thinks that traps doing 150 damage is too high. He's not the first to say it, but not everyone agrees. Is he right though? Do traps need a nerf? And if that's the case, what needs to be changed? My name is Dan, and in this video, we're going to be discussing whether or not the damage trap is too strong. Want to vote on the Season 10 meta? Play a few games with a knowledgeable coach? Don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for everything Fortnite. Alright, so not everybody agrees with Ninja on this, so we'll be looking at both sides of the argument here, trying to come up with some reasonable solutions. But first, let's look at how traps evolved into their current form. Back in Season 4, Epic decided to make some changes to the trap. In Patch 4.2, it was pretty much nerfed. Instead of dealing 125 damage, it was reduced to 75. No one really complained about traps much in the community, but even with nobody complaining about them, there must have been somebody on Fortnite's balance team who thought they were too strong. With this change, traps were deemed too weak by the community. Traps didn't exactly work the same way they do today, so that 75 damage is even weaker than it seems. With the community disliking the change, Epic needed to come up with a solution. In the next patch, traps were changed to being activatable on the structure still being built. Before, you had to wait until your wall or floor was finished building for the trap to work. This would take several seconds to happen, so you couldn't really use them in a fight like you can today. With this change, traps could now be used during build fights with much better results. Obviously, this is a huge change, and is a part of what made traps into what they are today. But still, only 75 damage? Well, one week later, there was a hotfix patch which buffed the crap out of traps. The damage went from 75 all the way up to 150. That's double the damage in a single change. It's even above the trap's original value of 125. It's unsure why Epic Games did a complete 180 on their balance with traps, but with this change, traps became so much more powerful. Other than some small tweaks and fixes, this is where the balance on traps stopped. Three weeks or so of erratic change until it ended up in its current state. So with five seasons passing since then, how does the balance of the trap fare today? Let's discuss the main arguments for the trap being too strong. In this case, Ninja's rant specifically calls out the damage on the trap. He thinks 150 damage should be lowered to 125, or even 100. 150 HP is a common threshold health value that you get by using mini shields, a big shield, or even chug splashes at the start of the game. Ideally, you would have more than 150 HP in the game, but a lot of the time you're just stuck at or under 150, and there isn't much you can do to raise it before you get into a fight. By being at 150 damage, it makes a single trap much more likely to finish off a player. Why single the trap out though? Plenty of weapons do over 150 damage in this game. Some of them, like Pump Shotty, can do 200 in a single hit. Well, one reason would be the level of skill it can take to pull off those big hits. If you force yourself into somebody's box because you got them low, you can't really be too mad if they land a perfect pump headshot on you before you can react. It takes a lot of skill to line up a shot like that. But if all they do is pull out their traps and start clicking all around, there isn't really any aim or hard mechanics required. Plus, you can still die to the traps even after you've eliminated their owner. That's probably one of the most unsatisfying ways to die, and we'll be discussing it more a bit later. Ninja also talks about the ability for traps to be spammed. It's not that uncommon to end up with several traps in your inventory after a few kills or with a bit of luck. With no cooldown or reload between each trap being placed, you can throw a ton of them around you in a panic situation. Many people often bring up this fact when a potential damage nerf is discussed. Would nerfing the damage to 125 or even 100 make a difference at all when it takes just one more trap to add up to 200? Well, of course it would. You can usually dodge a trap or two with clever movement and building while inside a box. By placing ramps or moving to the side opposite of the trap, you can avoid their damage. So even if somebody throws up two traps, you usually end up only taking damage from one. 
It's not surprising to see multiple traps in a player's late game inventory during pub matches, but in competitive game modes like Arena, ending up with a lot of traps is a lot harder to achieve. In fact, you might not even find a single one in some games. So there's definitely an element of RNG when it comes to you or your opponents having traps to use in a fight, and with it not taking up an item slot, finding a trap ends up being purely beneficial. By having their own slot and no max capacity, there's almost no downside to carrying traps. Finding one isn't like finding a heavy sniper or RPG. For those, you usually have to choose to forfeit carrying another weapon or extra utility as that part of the inventory is limited. But with traps, you just pick them up with no worry or decision making really required. Then their use in the later game can have a massive impact on the match outcome. One common argument for traps is that their existence is necessary to prevent mindless aggression. If traps didn't exist, every fight would be about getting into the other player's box for the kill. And if that's how most fights were in Fortnite, really close range shotgun or SMG battles, the game would start feeling too basic. It adds a method of counterplay that doesn't otherwise exist in the game and can make players work harder and smarter for their kills. Basically, traps help promote better gameplay. Also, traps can be used skillfully. Good players that go for trap kills in build fights do so by finding lapses in their opponent's building. Like coning your opponent into a trap kill or editing and trapping them in a box, these require a lot of knowledge and skill in building to pull off. And since building is such a big part of Fortnite's skill cap, there should be ways to eliminate players by doing it well. Maybe traps aren't OP at all, and what we saw was just Ninja playing poorly. Even when it's a top player complaining, messing up is always a possibility. Well, there were some things he could have done to prevent his death here. A strategy when you're trying to take somebody's wall is to protect yourself first. That's just part of box fighting 101. You do that by controlling all the structures around you. That way, your opponent can't go for a quick edit and place a trap. Pro players know and do this all the time, since editing out to trap your opponent has become a pretty common tactic. In this clip, Ninja doesn't protect his ceiling, which can just as easily get trapped, nor does he place a wall to his left to prevent a trap going there. Even putting a cone piece instead of a floor to stand on would have possibly prevented his death. A cone piece would have stopped his opponent from placing that ramp, and in this case, that ramp blocked enough shots which gave them time to place the trap. However, Ninja still eliminates him right as the trap is being placed. He eliminates him first. He punishes the guy completely for the play, but still also gets punished himself. So did Ninja mess up? Sure, but so did his opponent, and you could argue that his opponent made the first and even bigger mistake by going for a trap kill and dying because of it. This sort of begs the question, why do traps work after their owner dies? Sure, it can be really satisfying to spectate your opponent slowly walk into a trap you hid somewhere, but is that enough of a reason to keep them working after their owner's death? Should there not be a bigger element of risk versus reward when going for a trap play because of how impactful they can be? Like, if you can't even stay alive during the second it takes for the trap to trigger, why should you be rewarded for it? Promoting that type of behavior can make players go for poor aggressive plays when they shouldn't have because they're bloodthirsty for the elim. Not only that, but it can make fights end in a very unsatisfying fashion. Fourth elimination, Nav has two of his own six points total. Oh, there was a trap there! I never suspect the trap, Tifu! Oh my word! He is disgusted with what he just saw. Nav should be able to get him though, and they'll get him back into this. He does have a launch. So is the damage trap too strong? Does it need a nerf as Ninja suggested? Well, the simple fact that it doesn't take up an item slot makes it pretty good already. Combined with its high damage output and somewhat ease of use, lowering the damage to 125 would help put the trap in a fair but still useful state. This is the simplest and probably the most commonly discussed nerf for the trap. It would make it slightly weaker, but not put it in an unusable state or anything. But there's possibly another, more elegant solution that could work. If a trap owner dies or is knocked, all traps of theirs immediately deactivate and can no longer trigger. We think it's good for fights to have clear winners. A fight shouldn't end with both players dead and feeling punished. And with how traps act now, that's exactly what can happen in some fights. With this change, you can still go for those aggressive 150 damage trappy limbs during build battles. Assuming you're catching your opponent in your build, they won't be able to shoot you before the traps go off. That's a big part of the skill people talk about when they discuss trap usage, and it will remain untouched. However, players are now properly punished for using traps as a panicky last resort. You can still go for those plays, but you shouldn't expect an elimination if you get knocked out first yourself. It's a weird change that many of you might be averse to, so let us know in the comments what you guys think of our trap change proposal. Would lowering the damage just be a better solution? Or are traps fine where they're at now? Give us your guys' opinion in the comments below. Also, let us know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it, make sure you share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel because we have lots more videos like this and lots of tips and tricks coming up at you every single day. Also, if you want to follow me on social media, you can find me at, at Daniel Ammerman. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a good day.